of the reasons for practicing Tai Chi Chuan has to do with the breath according to our life cycle. Sometimes we forget or cannot see the whole picture as we go through life, what our breath is doing. Meaning that the ancient Taoists saw many thousand years ago this process that happens. And that process is, is that when you are born, that day is when you have optimum health. Thereafter, it's all on the decline, so to speak. Meaning that when you are born, your breath is very low. Like a small baby, when you see a baby, they just, their joints are all slightly bent. They have redness in their cheeks, in their hands. Everything is kept low. You can see their little pot belly stomach and their health is very good simply because they are at that point breathing low. And we'll explain that in just a second here. But first of all, let me explain what the Taoists saw. They saw that as you went through life, as you accumulated with anxieties, with fears, stresses, taxes, sex, all these things in life that produce tension force, that this was accelerating our aging process. In this whole field of trying to understand the breath, the Taoists saw that this breath rose on us throughout life. Meaning that in our middle years, our breath is pretty much in our solar plexus. When we become older, we, as men, generally speaking, develop what is called the bird's chest, meaning it's very puffy. We see this in a lot of older men, where the chest starts to stick out and they become top-heavy and lose their central equilibrium. Women, in general, because of their yin nature, develop it in the back. So you will see a lot of old women, when they become old, become very hunchback because the air has come up into the back of the, of the lungs. In the process of this breath rising, we finally come to the point where when we die, this breath is right at our throat meaning anybody who's been unfortunate enough to see somebody die knows that this is <coughs> that last little gasping for breath. That final moment is <coughs> and then we are gone. So the Taoists saw this whole process and then understood very clearly that if we wanted to maintain health, longevity, that we would have to reverse the breathing process. And that is the reason for keeping the breath below the navel in this imaginary point called the Dantian. Now backtracking, as I promised to do, the reason why we want to breathe low is because of two things. And in Taoist books, they always refer to it as water and as fire. Sometimes you'll hear it referred to as mercury and lead and all sorts of the dragon and the tiger. Many different symbolisms for it. But the process is, is that our body is mostly water. And that is where the Taoists are talking about all these bodily fluids in our body that can be heated, and especially at the bottom of the stomach. We have an enormous amount of fluids. Then the other element that they called fire, this is the breath. The breath is always warm. Those who live in cold climates know this for better than anybody in, in that sense, because we know when it gets very cold, we can always <laughs> and our breath will be hot. This is what the Taoists are talking about with fire. So by keeping your breath low in your stomach, part of the process here is heating these fluids, which in turn circulates throughout our body, meaning blood is a fluid. Therefore, we can generate heat throughout our body. When we can do this, we will maintain better blood circulation. And any doctor will also tell you that blood circulation is the key to health. In fact, if your blood doesn't circulate on minor levels, it's arthritis. This is the reason we get arthritis. We get blockages of the blood flow. Well, if it doesn't circulate at all, we die. So this is kind of like the main reason for a lot of Taoist practices, of which Taiji is one, is to get this breath below our navel so that we can breathe low, and also so that we can maintain a greater sense of health. Now, 
How do we breathe? This is another big uh, problem that I have seen throughout the years that I have uh, traveled around the country and taught with Master Leong, is a lot of people believe that if we just breathe low, deep, and slow, we will somehow uh, maintain good uh, breath by that. And it's not really true. What happens is, is that we must, what we call, use the mind intent. Meaning when you breathe, you put your breath below your navel by putting your attention there, not by putting your breath there. And I know I've confused everybody at this point, but the Taiji classics say that if you pay attention to your breath, your energy will be obstructed. If you give full attention to your mind intent, then your energy will flow unimpeded. So what does this mean? This is like a dirty glass of water, and if we stir it, the debris keeps floating around the glass, and it's not very clear. But if we can let the glass sit still, the debris will gradually sink to the bottom. Our breath is the same thing. Meaning when we meditate or when we practice Tai Chi Chuan, it is only important to put your attention below your navel. Don't try to force your breath into your lower stomach. This will only result in causing you to be short of breath and you won't uh, be able to be relaxed with your breath. But by putting your attention there, after a period of time of doing this, you will finally achieve what is called uh, this lower abdominal uh, breathing. When first beginning to learn Tai Chi, there are three things that are very important to learning, especially Mr. Leong's 150 posture form. The first one is, is a thing called not letting the knee pass over the toe. And the reason I'm bringing this one up is, is also, it was a big problem back in the early 70s when Tai Chi was first introduced to America. Uh, in the sense that doctors were reporting that people who practiced Tai Chi were developing bad knees. And the reason for that was is that the principle of not letting the knee pass over the toe was misinterpreted to a certain degree. And it wasn't being really looked at from the perspective that it was meant. Meaning that when we talk about not letting the knee pass over the toe, the earlier practices of Tai Chi thought that that meant, well, I just won't let my knee go over my toe, then everything's okay. But even if you do this, you can understand there's a great deal of tension on your thigh, your calf, your ankle, and your knee. By looking at the principle from another interpretation is when you say don't let the knee pass over the toe, when you're practicing, let's say, brush knee, push, whatever the posture may be, if you can still see your toe, you are now practicing the principle correctly. This means not letting the knee over the toe. So at any point in the form, if you look down, you should be able to see your toe. This will take a great deal of pressure off of your knee and allow you to relax your calf and your thigh to a greater degree. The second thing that is important to practice and to develop within learning this form is how to turn in your foot. Meaning that instead of just thinking that you drag your foot across the floor, which will cause problems in your ankle and your knee if you do that, think of it in terms of just getting to the point and lifting up your right toe or left, whatever the case may be, and then using your waist to gently turn yourself to the direction you're headed. This will make turning in your foot much simpler and much more relaxed on your leg. The third one, and which is extremely important to the practice of Tai Chi, has to do with the quality of the movement in your arms. But let me first give you an analogy. As little kids, some of you might have, and I was one of them that did, would press your arms into doorways and really hard and then let go very quickly and you would watch your and sense your hands floating up over your head as the blood rushed back into the fingertips. The, the sensation of Tai Chi is very similar, meaning that when you start moving 
according to your breath, there will be a floating sensation in your hands, meaning as if you stood here and you breathed and you went like this, all of a sudden your arms will start to move, but not coming from external muscular force. It is this floating sensation that develops in your arms and hands that you want for correct Tai Chi practice. So in Tai Chi, it is not a question of learning how to uh, extend or contract your arms and bending and all these things. It really has to do with articulation of joint, meaning that when you practice Tai Chi, remember in the beginning posture from preparation, your arms are here. Well, they have never really left this position throughout the form, meaning that no matter where we go now, all I'm doing is articulation of joint. So I should be able to stop anywhere, put my legs back, but not unbend anything in my wrists, elbows, and I'm still here. This will allow the blood to circulate from your shoulders into your fingertips. This is very important. It's articulation of joint, not the contraction and the extension of them. T.T. Leong's 150 postures solo form is a Yong style form. It developed from a man by the name of Yong Lu Chuan, who studied with a family called the Chen family, another form of Tai Chi. T.T. Leong had learned this particular style of Tai Chi from his teacher Chen Man Ching. He also had 14 other prominent teachers in Taiwan during his 20 years of learning there. So his form is a development of many ideas about Tai Chi from some of the best people to have ever practiced this art. T.T. Leong's form is very refined and defined, meaning that one of the things you will notice as you go through this tape is you will not just be learning a posture as such. You will be learning, first and foremost, beats. This has to do with what Taiji classics in part call knowing the square within the circle, meaning that when you start learning Taiji, instead of saying, well, I know it begins here and it ends here, so all this stuff in the middle really doesn't matter. Yes, it does. It matters very, very much. So that when you're learning this particular form, like the first beat, you will know that you're going to the northeast corner, then to the east, east northeast, then coming to the north. So that in each instance of your movement, you know exactly where you belong. Gradually, as your form becomes better and you know these beats and you can do them to music, which will make your form very consistent, you will then be able to just go through the form and people will say it looks round, but really you know exactly where you belonged the whole time that you were in the process of moving through these postures.